Hello and welcome to Cherry Pie Crash Course. This course will guide you through the fundamentals of Cherry Pie. Cherry Pie is among the oldest web frameworks available for Python. Many people aren't aware of its existence, including myself, till the last year. And the reason for this is that Cherry Pie is not a complete stack with built-in support for a multi-tier architecture, which means simply that there is no back-end, front-end multifunctionalities. In other words, it does not provide front-end utilities, nor will it let you connect to your storage. But Cherry Pie will let you make those decisions. And this is an unusual position compared to the other well-known frameworks like Django, Flask, and so on. Typical use cases for Cherry Pie go from regular web apps to web services. Why would you choose Cherry Pie? Here are some reasons. First of all, simplicity. Cherry Pie has a very simple and light learning curve in contrast to Django, Turbo Gears, Pylons, and so on. So, to develop a Hello World app is a very simple task, and it will take a few lines long, and you don't have even to learn the entire framework, which is, by the way, is very Pythonic. It follows Python's conventions very nicely. Cherry Pie also succeeds because it does not include the bloat of other frameworks allowing the programmer to write their web application quickly while still maintaining a high level of organization and scalability. It's also very modular. The core is fast and clean and extension features are easy to write and plug in using code or the elegant config system. In brief, Cherry Pie empowers you to work with the framework, not against it. Also maturity. It is a mature framework, which is very important if you want to develop a real-world web application. Unlike many other web frameworks, Cherry Pie has had many final stable releases. The first edition of Cherry Pie just set the tone, the second edition made it work, and the third edition made it beautiful. So every version was built on lessons learned from the previous, bringing developers a great tool for the job. Also deployability, unlike many other Python web frameworks, there are cost-effective ways to deploy your Cherry Pie applications. Out of the box, Cherry Pie includes its own production-ready HTTP server to host your application, and it can be deployed on any WSGI-compliant gateway. It's also an open-source project, which means free, so all of Cherry Pie is licensed under the open-source BSD license, which means Cherry Pie can be used commercially for zero cost. Plus, it has an amazing supportive community. Some of the websites also running on top of Cherry Pie, like Hulu, Netflix, and YouGov. And here are some important features about Cherry Pie. So, it's a reliable HTTP 1.1 compliant whiskey server, like we said. Also, it's easy to run multiple HTTP servers at once. It has a powerful configuration system for developers and deployers alike. It has a flexible plugin system, built-in profiling coverage and testing support, and it runs on Python 2.7 or higher, 3.5 or higher, PyPy, Jython, and Android. Now let's go ahead and code in Cherry Pie, but before that, we will need to install Cherry Pie via pip install Cherry Pie, and be careful, the C and Pie should be capitalized. So let's go ahead and install Cherry Pie. And as you can see, requirement already satisfied because I have already installed it on my computer. And I will create a folder called Cherry Pie Sandbox. And I'll open that with Visual Studio Code. Just before we get started, I'd like to show you the website of Cherry Pie. It's cherrypie.org. And you can see here a minimalist Python web framework. And this is a minimal application, how to set it. You see in few lines, it's a Pythonic object-oriented web framework. So if you know object-oriented programming, classes, functions, um, decorators, all of that, then you'll feel very comfortable working with Cherry Pie. All right. It has root, which is an HTTP server. All right. It has the community, the development, the documentation, is very good it's minimal but it has everything that you will need okay and here's something very nice I want to show you if you will click on community it will open directly your Gmail account and these are emails um, sent back and forth these are the cherry pie users right and they are asking questions they're answering each other 
and they are collaborating with different projects in Cherry Pie. It's very nice. Uh, let's open this for instance. You see here, uh, Svevslav Sidorenko, he is one of the maintainers, by the way. So if you will take a look here, so it's very nice, really. Okay, let's get back. And let me show you development. So you'll see here, this is the GitHub page. It has 1.4 uh, K stars. It was forked 312 times. All right. And again, it's not very well known because it doesn't have this back end, front end of multi functionalities. It doesn't have this multi tier uh, architecture, like we said. In contrast to Django or Flask, they have uh, Jinja2 or Django template language uh, for the front end. Um, and you can plug stuff and put stuff. So you don't have this here in Cherry Pie. All right, so let's get going and let's start coding in Cherry Pie. Let me just first create main one .py just to show you the minimal application how it's set so the first thing you need to do is to import the module itself so cherry pie okay and you will hover over you'll find that cherry pie uh, is the module consists of not one but four separate api layers the application layer is the simplest cherry pie applications are written as a tree of classes and methods i will show you right now so basically everything in cherry pie is constructed as a class so a class and under that class umbrella you can find different functions and each function is working as a page handler so to change the route from one page to one page you will simply type just slash and the name of the function that you have created and it will take you to that page okay so let's go ahead and explore that so let's have our hello world type of basic application so let's create class called hello world all right and uh, i will have and this is the way to do it so we have a decorator cherry pie dot expose and what comes after that will be immediately triggered which is generally a function okay so we will call it index and it will return a simple hello world all right and at the bottom we need to if name is equal to main We'll go ahead and use the cherry pie module dot quick start, right? Which mounts the, as you see here, mounts the given root and starts the built in server, then blocks. Okay, so quick start and we will pass our main class. Okay, hello world, and that's it. We will need to run the app as you will run any uh, Python file, so Python main1.py. It will open in the local uh, host uh, and it will listen on port 8080. Okay, so we'll click on that. And there it is. All right, with this small cherry logo. All right, if you will go and check out um, in the dev tools, you'll find that it's not HTML. It doesn't have doc type and language settings and all of that. But yeah, that's what it is. All right, so let's play a little bit with that. Okay, so this is basic application or in other words, minimal app. So we said that these functions will play the role of page handlers. So let's go ahead and create another function, but don't forget that we will need always add cherrypie.expose decorator. Cherrypie.expose. And we'll have our function so this function will generate eight random characters so i will call it generate okay and above here i will need the random module and if you don't know the random module i have a video where i'm explaining everything about the random module so make sure to check that out i also want to import string and let me just close that for you guys to see better so what I want to return is just single quotes dot join method. And what I want to join is I'm going to use the random module dot sample, which is a method. 
and this sample method takes string and displaying hex digits and I want to determine the number of these characters to be displayed randomly so we'll say 8 for instance okay and that's all so let's save that and let's refresh the page and it has a hot tree loader by the way if you have uh, seen here let me just show you so you see here the engine has started on the local host on port 8080 bus started restarting okay that's fine and you'll find here stop thread auto reloader so every time you refresh the page after modifying what you want it will auto reload directly it's exactly the same thing like um, setting the debug mode to true in flask or um, the hot reloader in fast api all right so let's go ahead now and change route so we will change to generate which is the name of our function all right and we have random um, string composed of eight characters from small and capital letters plus numbers okay so if you will refresh the page every time you will have different set of characters okay and you can um, just determine or set the number that you want so here we have increased it to 10 so if you will refresh the page it will increase okay it doesn't have to be like this so we can pass here as a parameter we can say length equal to 10 and here we can convert that length to integer and type length all right as an argument so it will do the exact same thing so this is just to show you that we can set some parameters and pass arguments not necessarily a fixed number or a fixed value. So let's go ahead now and create a submit button. Let me type here submit.py. And in that submit.py, I want to also import random. So the idea here, instead of refreshing the page and getting different set of characters, I want to have a button. And when I click on that button, I should receive a random set of characters, okay? Because this is not a good user experience. So let's also import string and let's import cherry pie. And now I will have a class and I will call it generator our cherry pie dot expose decorator. And we should have our function. And we want to return. I'll put it in triple double quotes like that. And let's have some HTML. Um, then we want a head. It's not necessary really. Then I want a body. And what I want inside the body actually is a form. So that form has a method of get, okay? And action generate. Okay, so this is the form and inside the form we want an input field so input with a type of text and value here we can set the value to whatever number of characters that we want so value will set it to 10 and name will set it to length because this is the length of the characters that I want to return and we want a button so let's have a button with the type of submit okay and here we'll say let it train and let's close the form and that's it this is what we want to return and we will need also our generate function so in order to that generate function to be triggered we will need it to be here in the body of the class so let's go ahead and copy it copy that all right and let's also copy this copy this and we'll paste it below here okay and we want to start the class which is generator okay we'll save that let's kill the server and let's go ahead and run the submit.py all right this is still working but if we will go just to the default route, we will have now our 
um, input field with our button. So let it train. We'll have here one string. Again, we'll have a different. Again, we'll have a different. So here we can increase it if we want. Let it train, we'll have 20. But look what happened if I will make it 30. We will have an internal server error because here below you will find that sample larger than population or is negative okay it could not have more than 20 or maybe not 20 maybe just 30 if we'll make it 25 for instance let the train also all right so 21 let the train all right 21 that's fine two that's fine 24 and from 24 I think okay from 23 it started to have this error we can also have different routes so let's have a different route cherry pie dot expose and uh, let's have JSON for example self And here, uh, let's say for instance that we want to return. Okay, so I will need to import JSON. Okay. And let's just here below. All right, and let's return JSON.dumps. And let's say for instance ping. And here, can make it pong like that let's save okay and let's go to JSON so we can change route like that JSON have ping pong we can also store it in a variable so response I will set it to pong for instance and I will pass here res like that will save that and it will do the same thing okay Alright, so this was the end of this quick crash course. I didn't cover everything, of course, just I wanted you to know that there are other possibilities to create web servers other than the other well-known frameworks like Django, Flask, FastAPI, Pyramid, Turbo Gears, Bottle, and actually there are quite a lot in Python. So Cherry Pie is one to consider if you just want to concentrate on the back-end side. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.